Hi, welcome to Plastic Surgery 90210. So candidates that are good uh, for liposuction of the abdomen are people that are at a stable weight. They're not gaining weight, they're not losing weight, they're just sort of at a plateau. Their weight should be stable for at least about three months. They should be healthy, not too many medical comorbidities, not sort of high blood pressure that's out of control, diabetes that's out of control, and you shouldn't be smoking. So if you have an active smoker, uh, you know, I'm going to want you to quit for at least uh, a month or two before isolated liposuction of the abdomen. Probably the most common question we get about liposuction in the abdomen is, do I need lipo or do I really need a tummy tuck? And that really depends on many, many factors. Depends on the quality of your skin. Uh, are you young without stretch marks, never been overweight, never had pregnancy? Well, chances are that skin's gonna really snap back. Or are you older, uh, maybe in your 60s, sun damaged skin, multiple children, maybe you've lost 100 pounds, you have a lot of stretch marks. Those patients will probably do better with a tummy tuck. I think it's very important, don't make up your decision without a plastic surgeon. So almost all plastic surgeons have the patient's best interests in mind. We want to get you the best result. But sometimes the patient doesn't want to undergo a certain procedure for one reason or another. Maybe they don't want to have the tummy tuck because of the scar and the downtime, etc. So it's very important that you know you consult with a significant number of plastic surgeons. You get the general consensus. You agree upon, okay, that's the procedure I want to have, and then uh, express your expectations of the surgery and what it will accomplish, and just check with your plastic surgeon that your plastic surgeon can get those expectations for you. So with liposuction, some patients just want a nice flat abdomen. Some patients want a more muscular abdomen, so that's when we go in and define the muscle structure underneath it. So this patient uh, is an avid uh, fitness buff. Uh, originally, he weighed 325 pounds, lost about 120 pounds, underwent a tummy tuck with another uh, plastic surgeon, and wanted more. So he came to me uh, here with a prior tummy tuck and wanted more abdominal wall definition. Well, I told him, look, you know, you can't really have much more of a tummy tuck because that's uh, pretty tight, but we can sculpt out the muscles underneath. So I did uh, Vaser high definition six pack here, sculpting out the linea alba there, semilunaris lines on the side, and these horizontal transcriptions there. So he has a very athletic body here. We also uh, did a breast reduction on him, giving you more uh, defined pecs. And you can see it from the side here. Uh, you can see this definition of one, two, three, four, five, six pack and uh, eradication or, or removal of the fat from just underneath the belly button out into the hips here. We also did a torsoplasty where I made an incision from the armpit down the side. That's what that scar is there. And then the breast reduction as it trails out there. But I think he has a fantastic result here uh, after Vaser High Definition Liposculpting. So this patient also exercises and diets a lot, but really can't get the definition that she wants of her abdomen. But she doesn't want a full ripped six pack. She wants more uh, definition of the underlying muscles, but not sort of blown out uh, all six pack showing. So on her, I did liposuction to the lower abdomen here, getting rid of all the uh, fat there. She didn't have much. And accentuated the linea alba line here in the middle and accentuated a little bit of the semilunaris lines in there, giving her more of the illusion of a nice flat uh, tummy without sort of this ripped uh, six-pack look. So we can get you a nice flat tummy uh, even without having uh, making the muscles pop. So this is a young gentleman uh, who dieted and exercised all the time and really couldn't lose a lot of the fat in the love handle region there on the sides and sort of in this area underneath his uh, belly button. He conscientiously uh, exercises every single day, barely eats anything, and still is left with this shape. So I suggested to him Vaser high definition liposuction and in one surgery taking about three hours under general anesthesia, we sculpted him this new body. You can also see the shape of his body has changed from sort of this shape to much more of a V-cut. Uh, chest comes down into the waistline and then goes narrowly down into the waistline. So that's what men want, uh, sort of this high definition Vaser uh, abdominal six pack. Here we have uh, basically the patient was born as a male. In her transformation surgery, she had breast implants and she wanted a athletic uh, but feminine body. So what we do when we're doing uh, transgender patients, I sculpt out the linea alba line there, semilunaris lines on the side to give the uh, illusion of these vertical lines in there for muscle definition. And uh, she looks so fantastic now. She's a professional model. 
Uh, so this patient had uh, come into me and wanted more shape uh, to her abdomen. And she had previously had a tummy tuck here. And I told her, look, you know, we can't get your tummy flatter because the skin's super tight already. So she said she wanted more of a curve to her body. So on her, what I did is liposuction uh, aggressively over the superiliac crest in here and in here and giving her more of this hourglass shaped curve to her body. I don't specifically have a BMI number. Plastic surgeons and surgeons in general like the BMI to be less than 30. That's sort of the ideal number. But I also take into account, as most experienced board certified plastic surgeons do, is we take in the patient's past medical and past surgical history in account. Now, if a patient's uh, BMI is maybe 30 or maybe even 40, well, maybe they don't qualify because they're not under 30, but you have to take into account maybe that patient had lost 500 pounds. Maybe that patient had diabetes and hypertension and now that's all gone and they barely eat anything and they still can't get to that BMI less than 30. Does that disqualify them from surgery? Not necessarily. So BMI is a guideline, not a strict number that prohibits you or makes you acceptable to have surgery. We have plenty of patients who have a BMI of 25, 27, 28, and they have diabetes out of control, they smoke, and their hypertension is through the roof. They're high blood pressure they're not gonna have surgery, they're not gonna qualify for surgery. So just a single BMI number doesn't mean you can or cannot have surgery. So we have a lot of patients who have a tummy tuck and still exercise and really can't get those muscles to pop. So yeah, so we can do vaser high definition on top of a prior tummy tuck. So a lot of patients will come to me, they've had the tummy, they exercise all the time, they can't get those muscles to pop. And we'll do vaser high def, it takes me about three hours to sculpt out those muscles on top of the tummy tuck and we can get you a fantastic abdomen. Vaser high def liposuction in the abdomen typically takes me about three hours, but it varies depending on the patient. So the most common complication of vaser high def uh, liposuction in the abdomen is gonna be irregular skin or contour irregularities. That's probably the most common. Those uh, typically go away with deep tissue massage and with time, they usually go away. Another complication can be seromas, collection of fluid pocket of serous fluid. That's your body's natural fluid to help things stick down. You can get a hematoma, which is a collection of blood. And if you do get a collection of blood, maybe we'll put a needle in it and also drain that. But usually those are the most common things that can happen after vaser lipo. Compression garments are essential for the vaser liposuction. Uh, it's critical that you wear them. So for vaser liposuction, I have my patients wear foam and then the garment on top of that and then actually a vest that goes on top of that. Keeps their body core nice and uh, straight, um, and so you can't really bend, and really allows that skin to shrink wrap around the muscle. So I think compression is so important after the uh, vaser high def. And I have you wear those compression garments for about six to eight weeks. If you still have swelling at the six to eight week mark, you're gonna wear the garment for longer. The vest we have you wear for about two weeks. So thanks for watching, Plastic Surgery 90210. We'll see you next time.